2021 I'm about five five years in my Allberg 37 restoration project um, my goal for this year is getting basically the deck fixed so right now I'm tackling the teak rails okay now this is how they look like Pretty rotted out. I cut them mostly off already. I don't know what they were thinking back then. They caulking those things on top of the deck to hull joints, which of course hides all this, all those little cracks. And uh, usually there's where the separation starts and the water comes in from the inside can't see a drip here and there and nobody knows where it's coming from so here's what I'm gonna do I don't know what the fetish with this damn teak is but I'm gonna get rid of it yes I know everybody's gonna be screamed the beautiful teak you know what fuck the teak it's 
outdated. It has its time. It's not a wooden boat anymore. This is fiberglass. <clears throat> this is a plastic boat basically. So why adding this everlasting maintenance crap on a boat so what you can impress the neighbors at the dock so you have your little dock ornament your dock queen polishing five times a year your teak oiling it up varnishing it it's an everlasting construction site this is what I'm doing I get rid of all this teak I use West Systems 404 high density filler clean all the old crap out of those joints and fill the joints up until new holes of course the screws are covered now but under there they're basically stainless steel machine screws quarter inch I actually threaded it in the fiberglass Locked them in there with West System epoxy, and then it gets fiberglassed over, and it's gonna look afterwards something like that. Maybe not beautiful, maybe not looking like a fucking yard anymore, but it's functional. And people, the teak does not add to any structural strength on those boats. It is just a leftover nostalgia. I do not want any more maintenance than I have to do on this boat when I'm done. So I don't care about looks. I want this thing to be functional and plain. Oh, and yeah, lifeline stanchions, they're not going to be on there either. That's for pussies. God, who wants to live forever anyways? Lifelines. Yeah, right. I don't have little doggies running around, no kids running around on the boat. No clumsy women. As a matter of fact, I'm going to be by myself on this boat. I don't want to take care of people. I don't want to watch anybody. Anyhow, that's gonna be just jack lines on the boat just in case I have to walk around on deck. I'm gonna wear a harness all the time. If I go overboard, I just pull myself back up. If I can't do that anymore, <laughs> what's the time of being here? Alright, next. Finally found also used propeller since I repowered this boat with a Beta 28 which is basically a Kubota three-cylinder motor, 28 horsepower. And I was recommended by actually a representative from Beta Marine to have a 14 by nine propeller, which I couldn't find one, not used anyways, new would have been 500 bucks. So I found this one used. A 13 by 12. Not sure if it's gonna work. I'm just gonna test it. Before I had a 13 by 9 on it, but also I had a 40 horsepower Perkins motor in there with a direct drive transmission. This one is a 1 to 2 gear reduction basically. So I'm just gonna try it. I can change the propeller under water if I have to, but. From here on forward, just a try and error. This was used, 150 bucks. Eh, it's in okay shape. Dance Marine in clear water. They are notoriously expensive, but what are you gonna do? I guess they, had, oh, they have overhead or something, you know, but I only buy there if I really don't see no other choice because times it's better to bite new. Alright, let's see. This is gonna be the propeller for now. Yeah again a beautiful stupid teak. Unbelievable. 
Can you see all this shit there? And that is either aged, I don't know, putty, silicone, whatever, but when I pull it off, it just falls apart. There, it does not seal. It does not adhere the teak to the fiberglass, which probably never does anyways. It's basically just bolted on there, or screwed on there, with self-tapping sheet metal screws. How the heck is that ever gonna last? The only thing that holds it on there is really just a aluminum rail for the travelers. But I'm gonna remove that teak too, unbolt everything, and that rail gets mounted straight onto the halter deck joint. And it's gonna be sealed. No more water going in. There's a few soft spots here on each side. So I'm just gonna have to redo that. I'm probably not gonna put any videos of that up because there's already hundreds on them of them on YouTube. Everybody knows by now or should know by now how to repair deck coring. That's not like it contribute. I just do what everybody else does. More or less. Okay. A few years ago I just injected some epoxy here just to stop the worst, you know, leakage or something. Which is only temporary fix, it doesn't work all that great. So the foredeck is pretty solid still. I don't feel any soft spots here, but usually it doesn't retain any water anyways. Anyhow, I'm still gonna cut cut it open. <clears throat> gonna reinforce where this windlass sits. I have to do something to reinforce where the chain is gonna be held in place. Because one time I got, I set on anchor and high winds and high waves and it was jerking on the chain pretty good so I'm not gonna have that again I don't know if I'm gonna leave that bow pit on there or not I don't really see the purpose of it especially since there are not gonna be no damn stanchions on this boat first of all I think they're ugly they get in the way and they are notorious for creating leakage through the deck Probably the worst culprits of all of them. I don't understand lifelines. I really don't. I rather have that thing look like an oversized surfboard when I'm done. No stinking bimini either. Maybe a dodger, because this is a wet boat. It dives through the waves. I got a taste of that a couple of times when I, a few times I actually sailed it. Not too bad though. Here's some example of the piss poor way it was. The deck is made it to the hull. There we go. It's not even really all that straight. But the boat builder just puts the fucking teak on top like everywhere else just to hide this shit. That's just some silicone I put under there a couple of years ago just to stop some of the worst leakage. All right, cut the teak off right there. And of course, those are notorious areas where it leaks. Gel coat, there's another culprit. That shit is the devil. It hides all those little hairline cracks and the water keeps seeping in. Rides out the balls are coring and we all know the rest it is what it is the boat is almost 50 years old 
I'm trying to build it to the point that when I'm done that I don't have to touch it anymore. part is done. Let's put some primer on top just so the sun doesn't eat up the new fiberglass. I have to clean the inside a little bit more. But yes, that's how it's gonna look like. No stinking tow rail on them anymore on there. That's enough of a lip. I'll catch my toe just plenty fine. Yes, it's not pretty. Who gives a shit? Okay, let's go inside. It's gonna be a total mess, but I'm gonna tape it anyways. My engine compartment's still pretty open. I started putting the wood back onto the whatever you call that quarter berth captain's berth yeah, whatever I have to reinforce this area here because the plastic liner it's kind of weak there right there where my foot is and it was separating and so what I did I put some plywood over from the from beneath and basically here and on top reinforce it glued it all in with West System 406 pretty good fairing compound and that shit gets really 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 hard and sticks to everything and I just put one layer of fiberglass over use some peel ply to get it somewhat straight that's it it's strong now won't flex no more. We got a couple of BG Zoos chart plotters. Got them dirt cheap on eBay. The older ones, not the touch screen. I don't want the touch screen because touching those screens, they always screw up. Fingerprints all over, that's the least of the problems, but eventually they go bad. And then you can basically throw them away those push button units here you can replace you can actually get the remote ones for it yes they're outdated about 10 years old but they're 12 inches they're identical they work perfect and they were 400 bucks for both Can't do that. so in the back oh yeah this is a mess of course all dusty. I'm gonna have to blow that dust out before I start working in here again. <clears throat> so basically, that's the back where I mounted. That is the controller for my depth sounder, transducer, I don't know what you want to call it. Which I mounted down, down here under this that great right there yeah let's see let me open it up take a look at it yeah, hard to tell but it's one of the airmar i think 740 or something that's what they call a try do so it got of course the, the transducer for depth it also got the speed pedal wheel built in and the water temperature sensor it was new old stock got a good deal on it too it was quite some work to put it in but i think it worked out all right it works at least so this is basically the back of my chart plotters I'm trying to find the autopilot controller for it but I'm just gonna wait for a deal right now the boat 
doesn't go anywhere anyway so why mounting it all in there my GPS antenna cable goes along there out there right there and goes the GPS antenna is basically mounted on those air boxes almost flush it doesn't get in the way usually there's no reason to step on those things anyway so works just fine um, that's pretty much it for now I got somewhat of the control panel built here is the inside with my instrument class the engine control what have you I made it so I can easily work on it just in case I have to two separate fuse boxes one for the house batteries and this one is just for the engine control so because they're gonna run on two separate batteries main disconnect for the house batteries doesn't just delay timers for one for my glow plug controller which I set to an automatic timer and the other one is a delay for the alternator so the alternator is going to kick in after about I think it's set to about 30 seconds so it does a strain on the engine on startup that's not necessary really but most timers are dirt cheap so why not putting them in that's delay timer for my bilge pump because it happened that the float switch is just started kind of bumping up and down there's always borderline sometimes the bilge pump would kick on and off so I'm running that on about 30 second timer so meaning once it's triggered even if the float is light on turns itself off already it's still gonna run the bilge pump for another 30 seconds make sure the rest is also lifted out that's basically the back of the ignition switch let's close this up I haven't labeled those switches yet it's like basic bilge pump, navigation light, anchor light and a few other things not that important to talk about ignition switch fuel gauge mm, that's just a little push button for so I can stop the engine without turning the key off just in case something happens and I have to turn the engine off quick but the key will also turn it off okay I think oh okay let me look at the instrument cluster from the outside I just done building that last, last month I decided to build on my own because everybody wants like 500 and some dollars for for already custom built ones and not to mention they're close to a thousand bucks from like the beta marine which is stupid a hundred bucks with the gauges and some plastic and some lights and they want a thousand bucks Jesus man okay this is my instrument cluster I made this cover here this panel I'm gonna put hinges on there for now I just stuck it on there it just protects it from sunlight glaring on the gauges and basically making sure those things that don't fade out there you go everything in there tack temperature oil pressure voltmeter hour meter and some LED lights for basically if the oil pressure drops or the temperature get too high just catch some attention I will go install a buzzer too later on it's all good for now no Hawkeye depth gauge they work okay they're dirt cheap easy to install they tend to 
be finicky about when you get in fairly shallow water, sometimes such as reed zero. If it gets less than four feet or something. But then again, if it's less than four feet, I'm already sitting on the ground anyways. So what's the point? It kind of like gives you a ball putt figure where you're at. Like I said, they're cheap, but the main the main depth sounder is gonna be on the chart plotters. Which I can see right from here, at least one of them, which is all I need. The other one's just really just back up. And plus, like I said, I got them both for a real great deal as a package deal, so I put them both in. So if one fails, I just turn the other one on because they're basically linked together, both do the same thing. So can't go wrong with that. Plus makes the whole navigation area look a little bit more professional. Even though I'm not. <laughs> so I need chart plotters. Without them I'm lost. Okay, put a little cover back on. Like I said, those hog eyes. They're about 120 bucks brand new, including the transducer. I just glued them in the hull. So lots more work, but it's the labor of love. You know, in contrary to what most people believe, it's not all that expensive if you do all the work on your own. But you really have to do everything on your own. And that's what I do. I'm a mechanic, so anything mechanical is real child's play for me. Because I'm repairing anything that has a motor for the better part of the past 40 years. Holy shit, I'm getting old. Fiberglass work is kind of like, you got to get used to it, but I've, doing, I've been doing it for a long time. I just, for two, three years ago, I started changing everything to epoxies. Because they are, they are better than the polyester resins. Easy to work with. And especially West systems, yes, it's pricey, I know. I know and I know the comments that's gonna come. I can buy bulk, I can buy cheaper here and there, and it's just as good. I know all those things. But to be honest, I don't wanna deal with 50,000 different mixing cups. I don't wanna read instructions. That West system, you got the little pumps, you count the pumps, you got like three, four different type of hardener stages. Especially living in Florida where you have to deal with high humidity, heat, cold, whatever, changing weathers. It's a good thing to have options of manipulating the potting times. Okay, I think I've been rattling on enough for this video. All right. I really don't want to hear any comments about it. It isn't it isn't that I would try to educate anybody. It's not that I'm trying to tell anybody how to do their boat. It's just for myself, for my own personal amusement. A little background, I bought this boat but in 2015. This is not my boat, this is my friend's boat. Some custom built steel boat, I just swing my camera over. So yeah, I bought this Albrecht 37 in 2015 for 2500 bucks with a locked up engine. Like I said, I'm a mechanic. Locked up engines and rebuilding engines is, doesn't mean nothing to me. It's not even that expensive. It's just a labor and I don't pay myself in labor. And the boat was sitting for 10 years in a boatyard at Lake Okeechobee. Glades Boat Storage. Good place actually. Good people to deal with. Anyhow, it was sitting there. Been sold in this boat yard probably four or five times. Everybody starts stripping a little bit more off that damn boat. But I got dirt cheap. Shit, even the lead in the keel is more worth than that. Oh yeah, and by the way, that used to be a yawl. I took the back mast off because I simply don't want to deal with more rigging. And plus I think y'all look ugly, catches look ugly. I don't know, it looks like they wanted to be a schooner 
or tall ship but didn't quite make it and I know the comms come in again I should keep it as a yaw because it's so much better but you know what people I'm gonna be by myself I'm a single guy I'm an old guy I do not need the ultimate speed which of course doesn't even make any more speed or handling capability and yes it would be great in a storm to have that little mass in the back running two storm sails guess what I can run one storm sail just perfectly fine anyhow that's it for now thank you for watching my video and well till next time thank you bye